It's the Saturday show, 97.5, the KSL Sports Zone. Christian Esparza, Alex Napolis, ready to start your weekend off right. And it is a busy Saturday here on the station, and we have a condensed show today. Only going to be one hour coming up at 11 a.m. We are going to have the pregame show for Utah State at Temple. So, Alex, we are running short on time today. Yeah, that's all right, but we'll try to get through everything and and get you guys ready for a big day of college football. Utah taking on Oklahoma State, as you mentioned, Utah State taking on Temple, and Kansas State taking on BYU. So we'll try to get you as much information on those as we can in this one hour this morning. Definitely, and uh, as tradition, before we jump into sports talk, let's start off with highlight of the week. Alex, what do you got? Highlight of my week, I'm going to be honest, I was kind of boring this week. I didn't really do much. Um, I think my highlight of the week is probably going to be uh, Thursday. I didn't have anything to do. I had no, no, nothing to do here at the zone, nothing to do uh, at home, nothing to do anywhere. And so I literally just sat around and watched Netflix all day. That there is, you go. That's my highlight of the week. Let's see. My highlight. Well, okay. I got to go weddings. Um, I had a wedding Thursday night, my old roommate from college. I had a wedding last night, one of my good friends growing up. And then uh, tonight, we'll see what time I get off work. I might be able to make it, might not. Uh, My cousin is getting married tonight. So three weddings in three days for me. It's a busy week. What do you think of the whole uh, getting married during college football season? Don't do it. <laughs> that was a, a social media discussion a, a few weeks ago. Don't do it. It is tough. This is a this is a time where you're supposed to be on your couch on Saturdays watching the game, not at weddings. Don't do it. Don't get married during the college football season. Don't get married during the football season. Yeah. Do it in May. Do it in in February. Don't do it during college football. Or summer. That's what I did. Yeah. Uh, July. It's a good time of year. Nothing July, going July on. July is a good time. Really slow season. Parker, you got a highlight of the week? Nothing? All right. Uh, before we jump into today's news, Alex, I want to share some old news from yesterday in case anybody missed it. A huge announcement here on 97.5-1280, the KSL Sports Zone. We are officially the radio home of the Utah Hockey Club, and that was announced again yesterday at 10 a.m. We had... General Manager Bill Armstrong on the Jake and Ben show to come on and talk about it. So super excited to be a part of this. I mean, I don't want to be too dramatic about it, but really it's a a historical part of Utah sports. First season of the NHL team here in Utah, and we get to be a part of that, broadcasting all of the games on the radio, including tomorrow's first preseason game uh, that's going to be at 5 against the St. Louis Blues. So that's going to be our first official uh, Utah Hockey Club radio broadcast tomorrow. I'm so excited, man. It yeah. is, it's absolutely incredible to just welcome in the, NH- with the NHL, welcome in hockey to the state of Utah. Very happy that we get to be a part of it, kind of, with uh, producing the games here uh, on on the KSL Hall Sports Zone, man. It's going to be fantastic. It's going to be amazing. It's going to be a special season as it's the inaugural season. Right. So it's really awesome just to have – all that kind of culminate and, and be here. This is the home of Utah hockey. And when you look at just what Ryan and Ash- Ashley Smith have done since March in bringing the team over here as quickly as they have, getting everything going, I mean, all the operations stuff is the fact that they've been able to do what they've done in such a short amount of time is insane. And it, it is nothing short of historic because, I mean, it's a – what do they call it, like the major five professional sports or whatever. It's it's a big deal to have an NHL team here in Utah. And so to be on this side of it and truly be a, a part of it, it's, it's so exciting. It's so awesome. Uh, speaking of some of the operation stuff that the hockey club has done, uh, Utah Hockey Club PR has a Twitter account. I believe it's run by their PR guy, Jeffrey Sanders. Um, but anyways, he tweeted out this morning – a new timeline on when fans should be able to expect to be able to purchase the the Utah Hockey Club sweaters. Originally, people were saying January, but according to this Utah Hockey Club PR account, that timeline has now moved up into November. So hopefully, fans can expect to purchase their you know the first edition of the Utah Hockey Club jersey in November, which is awesome. That is awesome. That 
you it gives you a, a sooner chance to to rep this new team. Um, but like I said last time we were talking, man, I'm very excited to see these sweaters. I'm very excited to see people rocking out all the Utah Hockey Club merch and really embrace just this new team being fans and supporting it, uh, especially during the inaugural season. Right, it's really important to to get things going uh, and get things rolling with a with a big fan base. Yeah, a hundred percent. And to potentially be able to own one of the sweaters, I mean, it's going to be sort of a collector's edition, right? Because they're kind of a temporary yeah. thing. Is the that's the idea. And so after this first season, even if they're not in use anymore, I mean, you'll be able to say like, "Hey, I have this. Like, this is a cool collector's item sort of thing." So that's awesome. And shout out again to everybody over there and. Making everything happen as, as quickly as they are, because I can't even imagine. I was reading some of this article that came out and said, typically, you know, the Smiths were putting in for the Jersey stuff in the spring of 2024. And normally when a team does that, it would be to have ready for the next season, the 2025-26 season. So they're basically doing things like a year faster than normal, <laughs> if that makes sense. It does. And I mean, you have to, right? It's... Everything's just happened so quickly. Hockey, one night, there was questions, are they coming, are they not? And then all of a sudden, hey, guess what? You have a hockey team. So yeah. <laughs> things have moved very quickly. Uh, again, big shout-out to all the people involved, the ownership, the the front office, guys like Bill, Bill Armstrong, and just everybody involved with, with getting this team ready to go for, for, for hockey, which is right around the corner, man. And again, we are the home of the Utah Hockey Club here on the KSL Sports Zone. Follow along uh, for your best radio coverage. And then Cole Bagley, the KSLSports.com NHL insider, he's done a phenomenal job so far. So if you're not keeping up with Cole's work already, you should definitely go and do it. Um, we're all doing our best to learn this sport as fast as we can. And uh, Cole's coverage is definitely helping along the way. But Enough with that. We'll talk more hockey a little bit later. we got football to talk. Let's start with Utah State, Alex. Uh, they're coming up again. 12 p.m. kickoff at Temple, 11 a.m. pregame. Utah State is coming off a 38-21 loss to the Utah Utes last week. Spencer Petras, their starting quarterback, he left game one, and then uh, he missed last week. So really, we we have not seen him since game one. Spencer Petras is expected to start today, according to Pete Thamel. So, uh, I don't know. It's interesting because Bryson Barnes came in, and, I mean, they they got bageled against USC. But he looked pretty good against against the Utes. But now uh, Petras is back to starting. And, look, if you go back to the Robert Morris game, they were down, what was it, 14-3 at the half? Yes, and yeah. And Petras... I don't know, man. I, I wasn't really impressed with the offense with Spencer Peterson. No, I, I agree. And so it'll be interesting to see kind of what happens as he comes back from this injury, as he gets ready to go for for this Temple game, which, I mean, for Utah State, it's going to be a big game for them. And so interesting to see kind of what Petrus does as he comes back to the start. Bryson Barnes, I thought, did a, a, a good enough job, um, especially against Utah. I thought he did a good enough job to – kind of lead this team in that absence through the injury so we'll see kind of we'll see how Petrus comes back and takes the rain and kind of bounces back from the underwhelming performance against Robert Morris 524 yards four touchdowns four interceptions for basically two and a half games of play for Bryson Barnes one thing I think is interesting is head coach Nate Dryling was quick to say multiple times that as soon as Petrus was back healthy he would be the starter and he was pretty adamant about that. He said that uh, Petrus was named the starter in spring training basically right away. And he wasn't going to change that. And so I, I do think that's interesting, especially considering that it probably wasn't even, I mean, Dryling at that time was the defensive coordinator, right? So it was the previous head coach, Blake Anderson, that named Petrus the starter. But Dryling, I mean, doesn't want to mess with that hierarchy that was already established. And Who's to say maybe things will change if if Petrus struggles? But, I mean, this is a big game for Utah State. So it does mean a lot that they trust him enough to to put him back into the starting role, even though Bryson Barnes did all right filling in. Um, but I, I, I truly am excited to see what Spencer Petrus does. And you bring up that this is a big game because Utah State is one and two. 
They uh, they they play at Temple today, and then they've got a bye before they play Boise State. So this is an incredibly big game for it, Utah State. It absolutely is, man. You want to go on the road to Temple. It'll be a tough game, I think, just flying across the country, heading to Temple, to Pennsylvania to play this game. But you need it. You need to win to get the confidence to head into Mountain West play. Because Boise State... I think that's going to be a really tough matchup. You know who else thinks it's a big game? Nate Dryley, the head coach of the Aggies. And uh, he had a, an interesting way of putting it. I'll, we'll let you hear the clip first, and then we'll talk about it. So this is Nate Dryling talking about this game. You go into your bye week two and two, you're feeling pretty good about things, and, and you know you're where you need to be going into conference. You start at one and three, and you're kind of up behind the eight ball the rest of the season trying to catch up. That's a great question. This is our Super Bowl, and we made that clear yesterday in team meetings. We're going to have to bring our own energy. There's not going to be a lot of fans. This is a 100% must-win game for Utah State. We need to come back. Uh, we need to come back 2-2 two and two going into bye week and get ready for Boise. So we will throw everything at them and uh, prepare like this is our Super Bowl because it is. So that was Nate Dryling on the Hans and Scotty show on Monday. They have him on every single Monday to talk to him and – that really caught my attention because not only – so he's calling this game a Super Bowl. The Aggies are 1-2, and two, Temple is 0-3. He called it – he said the same exact thing in their post game last week against the Utes. He said that this Temple game was going to be their Super Bowl. He said the same thing on Wednesday night's coaches show. Used the term Super Bowl when describing this game. And I don't think that I agree with that. Because that implies something a lot bigger. But I do see what he's trying to say in the sense that, hey, we really need to win this game and get back to 2-2 two and two before we start conference play. I agree with you. Um, it is, it's going to be a big game. They need a win. But I don't know if Super Bowl is the right word to describe all this. Because Super Bowl kind of implies, like, biggest game of the year. Right. Hands I down. I would I would even say, like, Maybe if he called Boise State the Super Bowl, yeah, I would. Okay, I'll give it to him. I'd get that. Yeah, absolutely. But an zero three Temple, yeah, it's interesting, and I I understand you want to rile your team up, you want to get them motivated, you want to get them ready for this this game against Temple. You heard it from Dryling; they want to go two and two heading into this bye week to get ready for Boise State. Like I said, have confidence heading into that Boise State game. But it's a it's. I don't know, man. Something it's weird ab- phrasing. Some, yeah, something about the Super Bowl comment against an 0-3 Temple. It's weird. It is a little. It's it's strange. But nonetheless, I mean, getting the confidence back is huge because yes. they started off the season strong against Robert Morris. Again, got shut out at USC. They played okay against Utah, but they ultimately lost by multiple scores. So right now they are 1-2. and two. Uh, To get back to, to even before starting conference play, Getting that confidence is really all they can be at. And looking at the big picture, nobody was expecting Utah to. Uh, nobody was expecting Utah State to be any better than two and two after today, right? Nobody thought they were going to be USC. Nobody thought they were going to beat the Utes at home, even. Um, so, so yeah, it's not like they're falling short of expectations. They're right where people thought. Yeah, yeah, I think I think they're hitting right where they need to be. Uh, I still want to give massive credit to to Nate Dryling for just holding everything together up there in Logan, keeping this team focused on the games and and having them still be competitive. Man, I think even though you know they lost to Utah and and they didn't score any points against USC, I do still believe that this Utah State team has been competitive through those games. Um, so it'll be interesting just to see again how they bounce back against Temple and, and try to right the ship. Going two and two for for Utah State into heading into Mountain West play, I think is going to be huge. Yeah, uh, and it is interesting going all the way across the country to Philadelphia. Rasul Faison, starting running back for the Aggies, he had a huge performance last week. Nineteen carries for a hundred fifteen yards. He honestly is one of my favorite players to watch on the Aggie offense. He's he's really really fun. He's from Philadelphia, so this is a bit of a, a home homecoming game. For him, he said in last week's post game that he's expecting a lot of his family to uh, be out here supporting him uh, for today's game. So, looking for a big game from Faison again, and that's definitely going to be key to victory for the Aggies. 
Alex, let's transition. Uh, let's talk Utes. Again, they are coming off the 38-21 to win last week over the Aggies in Logan. But today they head to Stillwater, and this is this is so interesting to me. Utah is ranked number 12 in the country right now. Uh, Oklahoma State ranked number 14. This is as big of a game as you can ask for in week four. Huge game. Huge game not only for Big 12 play, not only for Big 12 championship implications, but for college football playoff implications. This, 100%. And, and I know it's it's week four, right? It's early to, to be talking about this, but this game is huge. Number 12 taking on number 14. And what a way for Utah to start their Big 12 play against one of the other teams that are in contention to win this conference. Yeah, and so what's funny is this week and next week are huge as far as how the conference is going to shake out. Utah plays Oklahoma State this week. Next week, Utah plays Arizona. Arizona kind of falling short of expectations, but they are a team that in the preseason everybody thought was going to make noise. So no doubt that's a big game. And Oklahoma State will be taking on Kansas State next week Next as well. week, right. So Oklahoma State against Kansas State, who is currently ranked number 13 in the country. And then today, Kansas State plays BYU in Provo. And then again next week plays Oklahoma State. So, I mean... It's not going to be an easy game for the Wildcats in Provo today, and we'll, we'll talk more about that later. But the basically the three top teams in this conference have two challenging games uh, this week and next week. It'll be interesting kind of to see where, where everything shakes up when the dust settles. Uh, like like we're mentioning, this, these, these stretch of games have huge implications come, going down the line for later on where who's going to win the conference and who's going to be the representatives for, for big the Big 12 heading into college football playoffs. The interesting thing is I don't think any of these three teams are going to go 2-0 over the next two weeks. I'd be surprised. I think I agree with you on that one, yes. Um, I think, I don't know. I was going to say the Utes might have the best chance to go 2-0, but that all depends on Cam Rising. Uh, Steve Bartle, our Utah insider, came out with an article today, a little report, saying that Cam is going to be a game-time decision at Oklahoma State today, that's huge because I definitely don't think, I don't think they're going to beat Oklahoma State with Isaac Wilson. Um, I don't know. He 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 looked okay. He looked he definitely showed flashes last week at Utah State, and we were saying that that's what we wanted to see. Yes. We wanted to see the potential that was there, and we definitely saw it. He had some beautiful throws, but he was still also making some some freshman mistakes that I don't think that you can make at Stillwater, and expect to win. 100% agree with you, Christian. Look, it's a big game no matter what. No matter which way you look at it. I, Isaac Wilson, I think, especially in that second half, I th- thought did a lot better, Yeah, looked a lot better uh, against Utah State. However, you're going into Stillwater. It's yes. Boone Pickens Stadium. It is an extremely tough place to play. The energy there, the crowd there is absolutely phenomenal. Throwing a true freshman into that situation I think is going to be really tough. It's an opportunity for him to mature as a football player and mature heading into that environment, right, and potentially being the starter for for this Utah team as a true freshman. But there's a lot more confidence when you have Cam Rising under center. And we talk about Super Bowls. I mean, for Oklahoma State, this is probably their Super Bowl. This is their biggest home game of the year with the the preseason number one favorite coming into your house. You need this win because we were just talking about all the conference implications of the next two weeks. Oklahoma State needs this win if they want any chance to uh, to be playing for the Big 12 championship. And so if Utah is putting their backup quarterback out there, you can bet that that stadium is going to be going insane. Absolutely. And Isaac Wilson struggled in Logan. With you know the the jitters and the the crowd noise and everything, and I know for a fact that Oklahoma State is going to be giving Utah their best shot today. So Utah needs to be ready to match. Utah needs to be ready to match. And look, I think at the end of the day, man, you, this Utah defense is incredible. Yes, this Utah defense will rise up to the occasion. There is no doubt. I think it's all going to come down to this Utah offense. Can they click? 
with Isaac Wilson? Can they continue to play and show glimpses of how good they can be with Isaac with a true freshman as they did in that second half That's against if Utah he plays. State? That's if he plays. But if it's Cam Rising, I think, like I said, it gives you a lot more confidence because this is a guy who's been running this offense for three, four years, yeah. however long it's been. So interesting to see how this game time decision shakes up. Is Cam Rising going to play? Yeah, and that almost makes me wonder if it's going to be a no. Like if they're dragging it out until game time, I, I don't know. And even if he does play, he's not going to be 100%. And I believe that's something that Steve said uh, in his article. Um, again, we don't really know the extent of what his injury was. The rumor was that it was some sort of laceration on his throwing hand that needed stitches. I don't know if it was on the hand or the finger or whatever, but regardless, a, an injury to the throwing hand that's going to affect your ability to spin the ball, put a tight spiral on it, and uh, really protect it, that's huge. This game, Christian, reminds me a little bit about Utah's game against Oregon back in November 19th of 2022, where you go on the road to Austin Stadium, and it's two top 15 teams. A uh, huge game for Pac-12 implications. Yeah. Just reminds me of this. And in that game, the defense really stepped up for Utah, kept Oregon to just 20 points. However, for some reason, the offense didn't really click in that one. Utah ended up falling. This This feels like this game. This feels like that big of a caliber of a game and so this time i just hope that utah offense can rise to the occasion the good news is as we were talking about we're not really expecting anybody to go 2-0 and over these next two weeks as far as utah oklahoma state or kansas state um so if utah is unable to pull off the win in stillwater today they return home next week against arizona that should be a winnable game and uh it's not like if they lose today, then their hopes of making it to the Big 12 championship are gone. Definitely. Um, I think it's really interesting the way that the Big 12 set up this kind of schedule. This is a really fun two weeks, and for it to be week four and week five is a little unheard of. But it, I don't mind it because there's a lot of duds on today. <laughs> there's not a lot of exciting <laughs> football. So in reality, to put uh, Utes at Oklahoma State at 2 p.m. in that early afternoon window— that's awesome. It's a big time game for the conference. It's a big time game for Utah. And if Cam Rising does play, I I do like their chances to win a lot better. But I do want to put out there that I was frankly impressed with Isaac Wilson yeah, last week. Yeah, absolutely. He he put out some some really really good throws. Uh multiple times actually they ran a little corner route to the sideline and Isaac Wilson was able to layer it over the corner's head but keep it low enough to where the safety couldn't come in and uh, and break it up. So really just the ability to to float it right where it needed to go. Literally the corner jumped up and it went right over his hand a couple of times. He made this throw like two or three times. And I think it was clear that that is one of the throws that he's more comfortable making. And that's the potential that we're talking about. Absolutely. We, we saw glimpses of it, like we mentioned, in that second half. Isaac Wilson, I think, really grew into that game uh, up in Logan. If he plays tonight, I hope we can kind of see that, kind of replicate that and allow him to grow into the game. Very interesting, like I said, game time decision. And I want to piggyback off something you said, Christian, with everything that's happening next week as well, with Oklahoma taking on Kansas State. If Utah falls today, if Utah doesn't make it out of Stillwater with a, with a positive result, it's not the end of the world. Yeah. It's not the end of the world, and we hope that Kansas State can help out Utah later on next week. We'll see. Uh, I do want to mention Makai Bernard had an insane game last yes. week. 17 carries, 123 yards, and a touchdown. That is 7.2 yards per carry. Of course, a big chunk of those yards came off a, a monster run where he stiff-armed just about every Aggie on the defense, uh, threw a couple dudes to the ground like Derrick Henry. That was awesome to see. It really looks like Makai Bernard has stepped up and – I still don't know if this coaching staff is ready to commit to him as the RB1, but man, two weeks in a row now, he's put up really good performances. And uh, it's definitely helping out the offense a lot, especially with a true freshman backup quarterback out there playing. So that's been nice to see. Um, I know Isaac Wilson is going to do a good job of getting players like Dorian Singer involved, uh, players like Brant Keithy involved. Of course, of course if, if Cam Rising is playing, we already know 
the connection between him and Brant. Um, so if Cam goes out there, I want to see some some better connection with Singer and some of the other receivers. But can't talk about the the offensive weapons too much. I think they've they've all been showing really well through the first three games. I've been impressed, like you mentioned, with a guy like Mackay Bernard. Um, there was a lot of questions in this running game. We had him week one. I think game by game, Bernard has looked better. And so it does make you a little bit more comfortable if Utah can establish this run game and, and get things going early with Makai Bernard, especially if Cam Rising can't go. Again, that game is today at 2 p.m. The uh, The Ute pregame show is going to be at 1 here on 97.5, the KSL Sports Zone. So stay tuned for that. Going to take a break. On the other side, we will preview BYU versus Kansas State. This is a big matchup at home for the Cougars, and it's a really interesting one. So we'll talk more about that next on the other side. This is the Saturday Show 97.5, the KSL Sports Zone. This is the Saturday Show 97.5, the KSL Sports Zone. Christian Esparza, Alex Napolis. Alex, last segment we talked about Utah State and Utah and their big games today. Right now, let's talk BYU, and normally this is our five minutes of segment. Um, again, a condensed show today because we have Utah State pregame coming up at 11. But I don't I don't think we're going to be doing five minutes of because I, we might be spending a lot of time on BYU because this is such an interesting matchup uh, for the Cougars today. They're playing Kansas State, the number 13 team in the country, at home in Provo, and... I want your thoughts on how 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 much of a chance do the Cougars have? I think honestly, I think BYU has a little bit more of a shot than P- I think the media and people are giving them. I I don't know what it is about Lavelle Edwards Stadium at an, night at night with an 8:30 p.m. kickoff, but there's something special about Provo in these night games. I think Avery Johnson is a, is a, is a solid quarterback, a really good quarterback for Kansas State. I'll be interested to see kind of how he handles this BYU defense as well as kind of how he performs in in a, a true road test for 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 a young guy. Kansas State 6 and a half point favorites today at Lavelle Edwards Stadium, but you're right, Avery Johnson is such an intriguing player because he's truly dynamic. Uh, on the ground, 28 carries for 187 yards so far through uh, through three games. That's 6.7 yards on the ground. <clears throat> and then through the air, 490 yards passing, six touchdowns, and a pick. But clearly, I mean, just his ability to move around and just be slippery, I think, is is something that BYU is going to struggle with. And especially considering that the rushing quarterbacks are something that they have kind of struggled with early on uh even going back to the smu game i know they didn't allow a touchdown but smu's offense looked a lot different when they switched to uh to preston stone their running quarterback and he didn't do a lot of damage by any means on the ground but just the fact that their offense was able to look so much better i mean says something and going back to week one i mean that's something that again they struggled with against siu and look, I think at the end of the day, when it comes to BYU and this offense, they've, I I do I, I do agree with you that they've taken a big step from where we saw this offense against uh, SIU to kind of where they were against Wyoming. Yeah. So I, I hope that progression can just continue for BYU. They can continue to kind of figure it out game by game and continue to show more on offense. I was, I'm, I'm, I mean, I know it's Wyoming. They, they haven't won a game yet. But I do think that this BYU offense looked better against Wyoming and Laramie. Yeah, 34 points. Uh, Jake Retzlaff had 291 yards, three touchdowns, and uh, he still threw an interception, so he has not had a game without a turnover yet. Uh, but then on the ground, Retzlaff, 62 yards rushing himself. And I think that's a very underrated part of Jake Retzlaff's, Jake Retzlaff's game. Like he, People are talking about Avery Johnson and everything he can do on the ground, but Ratzlaff can move as well, and especially uh, some breaking news a little bit while we were in break. You said it was Pete Thamel reporting? Yes. Pete Thamel of ESPN has tweeted, Sources, BYU tailbacks, LJ Martin, and Hinkley Rapati are doubtful tonight 
against Kansas State. They are BYU's two most productive tailbacks. And so, again, we head into another game where you you can't count on LJ Martin and you can't count on Hinkley or Potty because they are, like Pete Namel said, doubtful for tonight. So that kind of worries me because looking at last week when those two backs were out again, uh, Haunga led – I'm so Retzlaff led the team – well, okay, Miles Davis led the team with eight carries, but he only had 15 yards. Retzlaff, le- Retzlaff led the team with 62 yards on six carries. Uh, Haunga had five carries for 35 yards. Sione Moa had six carries for 17 yards, and then Gary Pohannon got some garbage time action. He had three carries for 11 yards. So basically what I'm trying to say is without LJ Mart and, and uh, Hinkley Ropati, BYU is struggling to get production on the ground from their running backs. I think this is a big game where you have to. Miles Davis has to step up. Miles Davis has to be, has to show glimpses that he can be that guy when LJ Martin and Ropati are out. Haunga, I think, is also a very solid running back. Still, still on the younger side, right? He he, he is a freshman, but he's showing glimpses of. Being a really good running back, and you know you don't want to put, I guess, all that pressure uh, of of putting the entire running back game on his shoulders as a freshman, and so you got to rely on guys like Miles Davis to step up and and, and really take control of this BYU a bit of a running committee. game. Yeah, a- a- absolutely. Which is interesting because when L.J. Martin's healthy, he's the guy. Yes, and I mean when he's healthy. He will get a bulk of the carries, and then Rapati, you know, will probably spell him every once in a while, and maybe Miles Davis will come in or whatever. But with the top two guys out, they are truly, they don't know really who the lead guy is at running back. So they're kind of just playing, trying to establish a hot hand, and then really leaning on Jake Ratzlaff to use his legs and, and help open things up. So, yeah, I am a little concerned about BYU's offense without their running backs. The good news is, uh, Retzlaff looked good in the air last week. Again, nearly 300 yards and three touchdowns through the air. Chase Roberts, six catches for 129 yards. Really encouraging. Um, Keanu Hill had a touchdown and a couple other catches. I I do think that BYU's receiving core is really underrated. Yeah. And if Retzlaff can get going through the air, I think that's going to be BYU's best. I mean, obviously, that's going to be their best chance for success if – if Retzlaff can really let it rip, really connect with his guys. Uh, again, Chase Roberts was the main guy last week, but you never know who it's going to be. Maybe Cody Epps has a big game today. Maybe Lasseter leads the team in, in receiving yards. They've got a lot of weapons, and I really want to see Retzlaff continue to utilize these guys because they they really do have one of the more under underrated uh, receiving groups, receivers and tight ends in the Big 12. Absolutely. You look at the you look at the numbers passing last week for BYU. Twenty or excuse me, twenty five receptions from all the receivers, three hundred and eighteen passing yards. I thought that the passing game looked a lot better. Like I said, they've really progressed from where we kind of saw them. Maybe against an SMU, maybe against an SIU, they looked a lot better. Yes, I was very impressed with Chase Roberts. Um, I thought Chase Roberts looked really good, and I hope that they can just continue to to kind of run the hot hand of Chase Roberts at the moment because, I mean, 129 yards, that's definitely a big game for, for Roberts. So Retzlaff and Roberts, if they can continue to link up, um, this I think this offense can can find ways to move the ball down the field. Yeah, and so week one, I mean, against SIU, the FCS team, Retzlaff had 348 yards, right? And BYU won pretty big there. But then against SMU, he struggled, and he missed a lot of throws and couldn't really establish a connection with anybody he had 202 yards against SMU. So it was really encouraging to see them bounce back again, almost 300 yards against Wyoming. So if they can continue to just get a little better every week, it's a huge test at home today for BYU. But uh, I, I I am very interested to see what the offense looks like, again, without their top two running backs, against a top 13 team in the country. And uh We've been talking about a lot about the defense the last couple of weeks, and I'm hoping that they can continue their high level of play because this is their first true test. Um, going back to Avery Johnson, I mean, he's a he's a killer, and he is he, he's a bit of a worry for me as far as if BYU can contain him and really, really 
control those rushing lanes and keep him in the pocket because if if BYU wants any chance to win today, they they need to contain Avery Johnson. They need to force him to be a passer. And I know that's kind of a cliche talking point when you're talking about a dual threat quarterback, but that's the reality of it. He wants to rely on his legs. He wants to get out and run if he can. So truly, if BYU wants to win, they need to continue to to get home as they have been doing. They've got great pressure numbers throughout the first three games. And uh, I think the linebackers, Jack Kelly, being a, a QB spy sort of today, I think that's going to be the key really for BYU. I think through four weeks, um, through the first four weeks of the season, obviously, BYU, this is the best quarterback BYU has faced. Oh, Avery, no doubt. Avery Johnson Not even is, close. even as a sophomore, he's shown r- that he can be and will be really, really good for Kansas State and the Wildcats. Like you mentioned, Christian, they just need to contain him. They need to f- force him to throw, maybe get a little extra pressure on him, definitely have the spy to make sure that he can't escape and, and, and gash you for some big yards, right? BYU's defense really needs to step up and really needs to rise to the occasion, and I think they will feed off the energy at Lavelle Edwards Stadium, and there we'll continue to see this BYU defense continue to be successful. It's not going to be easy. It's and if, if this game was being played at Kansas State, I'd say the Cougars have a much lower chance. But the Absolutely. reality is it's a night game in Provo. <laughs> They've got special vanilla Cougar tails. They're wearing their throwback 96 whiteout jerseys. Those look very sick. Um, I don't know if the game's a sellout yet. I have seen some some social media discourse that it wasn't sold out yet, and some fans were disappointed. But by the time kickoff rolls around, I'd be really surprised if that stadium wasn't sold out. So Lavelle Edwards is going to be rocking, and I do think the Cougars are going to keep this game close. I, I'll be I'll be a little shocked if they get blown out at home in a night game. Uh, but, man, if BYU can get this win and introduce some chaos into the Big 12 this early on, that would be really something. I hope it happens just for the storylines. Yeah. Just, for, just so we can be here next week talking about not only a big BYU win, but of course the craziness and the chaos that it's going to ensue on the Big Twelve if BYU can pull this one off. And like I said, I think a lot of people, I think a lot of people, I think it's going to be a lot closer than people realize it's going to be. Yeah, the Big Twelve, and that's kind of a, a big talking point that people have been hammering all week, and in, uh, in the media availability that I was attending on Monday, at least. You know, Big Twelve games have been really close, kind of traditionally and they come down to one possession or even one play sometimes, and that's kind of what the Big 12 is known for. Even against teams like BYU that are kind of middle of the conference versus the top teams in the conference, like anybody can beat anybody, and it just comes down to one possession, one play, and I think BYU is ready for that, and the good news is, again, being at home definitely plays to their advantage in those situations. So let's see if Kalani Sataki and the Cougars are ready to heed this call because it's a big challenge for BYU tonight, but it should be a really fun game. Huge challenge. It'll be most definitely a fun game, of course, if BYU can just stay in it. Keep it close. Keep it close. Keep it close. Don't commit any too many turnovers. Keep the ball. Protect the ball, and I think you have a big shot against Kansas State. Let's take a break. On the other side, uh, we will wrap up the show, get you ready for Utah State pregame. Again, that's coming up at 11. And uh, we've got football coverage throughout the day. Big games for the Aggies, big big game for the Utes, uh, big game for the Cougars. Really just a really important day across the state as far as uh, college football goes. So we'll wrap this thing up next. This is the Saturday show, 97.5 DKSL Sports Zone. It's the Saturday show, 97.5 DKSL Sports Zone. Christian Esparza, Alex Napolis. Unfortunately, Alex, no time for technical fouls today. This is normally where we do it, but we are jam packed today. Absolutely. We'll 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 save some technical fouls for next week, and maybe bring you extra technical fouls yeah, next week. We'll be sure to make it special next week. But so much <laughs> to talk about today. Again, we are on kind of a condensed schedule. Utah State pregame, getting ready for their game at Temple. That's coming up here at 11 really soon, and that is going to be on both signals, 97.5 and 1280. Uh, Later on, we're going to have the Utah pregame, getting ready for their game at Oklahoma State. That's a 1 p.m. pregame on 97.5 and then 2 p.m. kickoff. 
And then BYU versus Kansas State, that is going to be a 7.30 pregame on 97.5 and then an 8.30 kick. So, again, really stay tuned all day, every Saturday. If you don't know already, you should. Uh, but really keep your radio on 97.5 every Saturday for the best coverage. I mean, we are literally wall-to-wall all day. Absolutely. And don't forget, I mean, hey, you also – uh, al- alongside BYU, you got Real Salt Lake playing tonight. Yeah, you have the bees playing tonight, and so we have all kinds of coverage here on ninety-seven five. Bees uh, wrapping up at Smith's Ballpark. This second is second to last game. Second to last game. Their last game is tomorrow. Yeah. Um, really sad to see them leave such a historic venue, but uh, I know that the Millers are doing a great job down in Daybreak with that stadium. It's going to be impressive, and I can't wait to see what that is like. And it's uh, it's a little bittersweet. Yeah, absolutely. While it is bittersweet, um, the renderings of the Daybreak Stadium look absolutely phenomenal. Excited to see them kind of pack it up and move over to Daybreak next season. But I mean, head out to Smith's Ballpark if you can. Go catch one of these final ga- the the final game um, at Smith's Ballpark. Yeah, uh, let's talk RSL real quick. Big game for them coming off the win against FC Dallas on Wednesday night. Uh, tonight, kind of a rivalry game against Portland. We talked about this last week, Alex, but RSL has not won back-to-back games since early July. And, of course, they've had the League's Cup break and some some breaks in between them, so they haven't been playing twice a week since then. But nevertheless, it's been two months, over two months, almost three, actually, since RSL, RSL has won back-to-back games. But the good news is they moved up to second place in the Western Conference. Yes. the At the end of the day, you'll take the three points. Um, I still think there needs to be... A lot cleaned up from the performance, uh, a little bit better play in the midfield, a little bit bit better play in the attack. But at the end of the day, you'll take the three points, you'll move into second place. And now it's such a pivotal moment in the season, Christian, with just five games left on the year. You have to continue to picking up picking up points to seed yourself in a good spot. 15 points on the table, Real Salt Lake. Things are so tight in the West. If with one loss, you can fall down to fifth, you can fall down to sixth depending on how other results shake up. And so very, very pivotal type to not only continue to pick up points, but in order to pick up some form, some confidence, as you get ready for the playoffs coming up in late October. And that, you know, after, I don't want to say a tough stretch for RSL, but really not looking as dominant as they had in the first part of the year. That's best case scenario was stringing together a couple wins to close out the regular season and really get back to form heading into playoffs because they they really did have a lot of change going on with the roster. They lost some players. They brought some new players in. So it's understandable why they've looked a little clunky the last few games, but uh, they, they got to figure it out, and I, I do think they will. But, uh, again, RSL coming up later tonight. Going to be a big game. Portland Timber, big rivals, 7.30 kick, 6.30 pregame here on the KSL Sports Zone. Again, in case you missed it, 97.5-1280, the zone is the official home of the Utah Hockey Club. So exciting for that. First game is tomorrow. Uh, It was announced yesterday that Mike Falta is going to be the radio play-by-play announcer. He comes from the Rockford Ice Hogs. They are the AHL affiliate of the Chicago Blackhawks, so Big opportunity for Mike to be moving up to the NHL and be a part of this historic season, inaugural season for the Utah Hockey Club. Tyson Nash is going to be a, a a personality and analyst for Utah Hockey Club Plus. That was announced earlier in the week as well to go alongside Jazz Plus. Um, you can find out all the pricing and stuff on social media. We don't really have a lot of time to cover it, but first preseason game for the Utah Hockey Club, that's tomorrow 5 p.m. puck drop against the St. Louis Blues. That game is designated as a home game for Utah, but it's played in Des Moines, Iowa. They will be playing at the Delta Center on Monday night, and uh, I might be going to that one. Oh, (laughs) hey. Already going out there and checking out some hockey. I know. I am excited. I can't wait uh, because I've never really been into hockey, but, of course, when this announcement was made, I had to go all in. I got the hockey game on the PlayStation, uh, really got up to speed there. We'll see if, I don't think I'm going to buy NHL 25. Um, I was playing last year's edition, and I kind of made my own Utah Hockey Club, but 
it's it's really cool and i can't wait to see what the ice is like and and what the rink looks like and it's going to be a fun time it is it's going to be like i said it's such, it's going to be a special season no matter what because this is the inaugural season everybody's going to want to be out there everybody's going to be having fun um despite you know what happens right can this team be competitive enough to make it to the playoffs can this team be competitive enough to to make some noise in the nhl in their yeah. first season but Regardless of that, it, it's going to be super fun just because it's the inaugural season. Yeah, we can't wait. Um, a busy weekend here on The Zone. Really, really packed. Again, big games today. We'll see if Utah is going to trot out Cam Rising or Isaac Wilson. Again, if you missed that, game time decision for the Utes. So we'll see what happens there. And uh, if Isaac Wilson does get to play, we'll see if he looks a little improved from last week. But stay Absolutely. tuned. A lot of action all day today here on 97.5, the KSL Sports Zone. This is the Saturday show.